Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Granth. In today's microservice lecture, we'll talk about service discovery. So today we are going to learn what is service discovery, why we use service discovery and where to use service discovery. So in the previous lecture, you might have seen that we introduced an API gateway and we had a pool of microservice and if client has to connect to a microservice, rather than directly talking to each of the microservice the client used to talk to the api gateway and api gateway had configuration and according to those configuration the request was getting routed to one of the microservices so till here we are good but the challenge comes when we have a scenario like this where we have multiple instances of each of these service so if we have like five instances of this service ten instances of this service another five instances of this service so what happens in that particular case so for that we need to go to api gateway and configure each of these instances in the api gateway as well but in today's world where we deal with uh, systems where the deployments are automated using docker and kubernetes what happens is that when the deployment happens that time the URL and port is allocated dynamically. So when a deployment happens for each of these microservices, you just say that, okay, I want five instances of user microservice. It's the responsibility of the system which deploys your application to assign port number and the URL for that particular service. So API gateway will not know where the five instance of this service is running where the five or ten instance of this service is running and if it does not know the url and port of all these system it will not be able to redirect your request so when we deal with a situation like this the concept of service discovery comes into picture and this is where service discovery will help us so as the name suggests service discovery it means that there will be a mechanism in which <clears throat> the client or this client can be another microservice or it can be a, an actual client or like a UI or a mobile application. So service discovery is the mechanism by which this client will be able to discover where the instances of each of these services are running. So or actually that uh, discovery might also happen on the API gateway layer itself. So at API gateway level, you can basically give the address of the service discovery that you go to the service discovery and give me back the list of the URL or uh, the URL and port number where all the services are running. So this is the high level picture where service discovery will uh, be used. So we'll dig deep into service discovery and we'll talk about how service discovery works, what are the different types of patterns that are involved as part of service discovery, how each of the service will register themselves with a service, service discovery or a service registry as it is called, where you go and register your service and how a load balancer or an API gateway or a client itself will be able to uh, pick up uh, the record or pick up the URL and port from the service registry and call the respective client. So we'll talk about all these things in the later part of the video. Do watch the video till end. <coughs> so when we talk about service discovery pattern, there are two patterns that we talk about. The first one is the service discovery itself, which has two parts, client side discovery and server side discovery. So either the discovery or the uh, when uh, I say discovery, I mean that if five instances of a service are running, so clients should know there are five instances. So that discovery can be made either on the client side or it can be made on the server side itself. So we'll talk about these two things. And the second part is the service registry where we will talk about how each of these service, when they come up or go down, they will register themselves with service registry so that at the time of discovery we have the complete knowledge of where the all the services are running so this service registry has two part one is self registration and other is third party registration so we'll discuss about all these features in detail <clears throat> so as part of service discovery we answer two main question one is how we will reach a microservice so we know that microservice has been deployed using an image of docker so it has a dynamic url so as part of the discovery we will see how we can figure out what is that dynamic url and port number and second is if 
some suppose five instances of a service are running so we should be able to load balance between those five instance and then send the request to each of these instance so service discovery will help us answer these two question and service registry will help us answer the question like how we can register a new instance of our service so suppose currently i have five instance of a service running but my system has to auto scale and i need to add one more instance so that new instance will have new url and uh, port number so that has to be registered with service registry so that a uh, request can be routed to that new instance as well so service registry will help us answer that question it will also help us answer a question like how we can deregister a dead instance it means that suppose out of those five instances if one instance has gone down so request should not be routed to the dead instance or the instance which has gone down so now the load balancer should be smart enough to balance the load between those four up and running instances so that we will uh, deal that we will talk about all those things as part of service registry and also uh, that uh, service registry has the responsibility to making sure that all the call goes to the healthy instance <coughs> so the first one as part of service discovery was client side discovery and it is similar to a phone book so the image and all whatever i am showing here is picked up from google so i don't claim any copyright or right on them i am just using it for explanation purpose but the block diagrams are mine so client side discovery it is like a phone book where you have a name and phone number as part of your book so if you have to call someone you will go through your phone book and pick up the number and make the call so it is in a similar way when you have a client side service discovery so client will have the responsibility to go to service registry and find the instances of the service it is looking for so this client can be another microservice as well so what will happen is this guy or this microservice or this client will go to service registry and it will ask the service registry that hey i want to make a call to service 1 give me all the running instances of service 1 so what service registry will do is service registry will return the list of the url and port number where service 1 is running now next this client or this microservice what it will do is it will load balance between those five instance or whatever the list of instance that the service registry has sent back to the client and it will load balance the request and then it will make the call to one of the instance of the service one so for this particular client the responsibility is it will have a service component which will be its own business logic or ui or whatever it is and it will also have a load balancer built in inside of it which will tell that uh, once i get the list of the running registries or uh, running instances from service registry i have to load balance that request so one example of this is print cloud eureka where you have a eureka client and uh, it will have its own responsibility that you do the configuration uh, that my service registry is present here and what spring cloud eureka will do is on the client side it will load balance the request for you so this is client side discovery i hope it is pretty simple let me just brief it again it is similar to a phone book where you go to you scroll down your book in this example you scroll down or you go to your service registry pick up the list of instances where a particular service is running and then load balance and send the request to that particular instance so that is how client side discovery happens the next part is service discovery on the server side so server side it is similar to a call center kind of thing so here what you do is you you make a call to a call center and uh, the guy the first person who is sitting on the uh, reception kind of thing they will pick up your call and if they are not able to answer your question what they will do is they will redirect your call to the responsible person so that is how the server dis server side discovery happens so here you your client side does not know or this client side is again another microservice it does not have any idea about uh, where all these services or the instance of this services are present and it will not have any idea at any given point of time so what this guy will do is it will talk to a load balancer which is outside the client so this load balancer responsibility is removed from the client side and it is deployed separately now this load balancer will actually talk to the service registry 
it will talk to service registry that hey one of the client has asked me for all the running instances of the service one give me that instance so the service registry will give back all those instances of service one and then load balancer will perform its duty of doing the balancing between the, all the instances that it has got and it will make a call to the service one so that is how server side discovery happens so here we have a segregation of responsibility where the client side or the microservice which is making a call it does not know or it does not bother about balancing the load or talking to service registry that responsibility lies with the load balancer so example is aws elb here we have segregation of responsibility between the service and the load balancing next we will talk about the registrations so how service registry happen so the first one was self registration as part of self registration what will happen is each of the service will have the responsibility of going to service registry and registering itself so this service one when it comes up it will go to service registry and it will say see my url and port number is this you register myself with you next if another instance of this service one comes up that instance will also go to service registry it will say that hey i am also up and running and you register my url and port number with yourself so that is how self registration happens now there are other responsibilities also which will happen as part of self registration one is the registration part which i told you the second is deregister so suppose if service one has one of the instance of the service one has to go down it can send a message to service registry that i will go down now uh, you just deregister myself or don't send me any request so that can be done as part of self registration next part is timing out so for some reason if service one of the instance of service one has gone down and it is down for certain period of time it means that uh, so for that uh, let me tell you one more concept that is the concept of heartbeat so each of the instance of this service which is running here they will be sending a heartbeat message to the service registry and that heartbeat message will be sent at a certain interval of time maybe like 10 second 30 seconds that is configurable so if after a heartbeat is missed it what means uh, what it means is that suppose after 30 second this one of the instance does not does not send the heartbeat message to service registry so service registry will hold that request and if there is another miss so at that point of time it will deregister itself so it will time out that instance and whenever a load balancer make a call to service registry asking for the instances of service one service registry will not send the uh, the url and port of the instance which had a miss which had a heartbeat miss so it will think that that particular instance has gone down and it is not be it will not be able to serve request now next time when that instance comes up it will send a heartbeat message to register itself again with service registry at that point service registry will start registering it will register that particular instance and if someone makes a call it will send the detail to of that new instance as well so that is how the self registration happen where you have the facility to register deregister time out and update status this update status is nothing but the heartbeat message that each of the instances are sending to service registry so this is a classical example where uh, what netflix eureka in spring boot uses so you have a enable eureka client when you include that jar as part of your spring project it will be the responsibility of this client to do your registration and deregistration and sending heartbeat signal and all those things now in case of third party registration what happens is that it is the responsibility of uh, means the responsibility for registering any service or a instance it will not lie with the service itself so like in the previous case where uh, the service itself used to go and say i am up i am sending you heartbeat message and all those things so in this case it will not happen uh, like that and uh, there will be a third party service which will be running and it is called uh, service registrar so there will be one more application which will be running which will basically pull the uh, whole environment where your application is deployed so this service registrar it will perform health check it will check whether any instance new instances are added or if any running instances has gone down 
so it will perform health check on the complete environment or cluster where your application is deployed and based on that it will figure out whether one of the instances is up, uh, up and running or not so if uh, so <coughs> that is one way other way is that it will subscribe to some event based system where you can have like uh, if an instance has gone down it can basically put an event there that uh, okay one of the instances is down or i am adding a new instance so it can basically perform these two things but the most valid one is where it performs a health check on the complete environment so how it works is that service registrar it will be monitoring this service one not the service one but the whole cluster or the environment where all these services are running it will uh, keep on performing a health check or a monitoring service there to see whether any new instance has come up or if a running instance has gone down and based on that result it will send that uh, entry into service registry and it will say that hey for service one i saw that a new instance was added so you add that as part of your registry for service 2 one of the instances has gone down so you remove that from your service registry so all this responsibility lies with this guy which is a service registrar and uh, that is how the third party registration happens so this is all about service discovery and how it uh, helps in architecting your system as part of uh, your microservice strategy and this is a very common way uh, or a co common uh, design pattern which you use while architecting your service because uh, mainly because you are using uh, the ci cd pipeline that you are building will be based on docker and kubernetes which will create the dynamic urls and uh, all these are automated so you don't have to worry about uh, much of the coding all the only thing that you have to do is the initial configuration and rest all will be taken care by the system that you have designed so that is how service discovery works that is it for this video in the next one i will come up with the design pattern of circuit breaker how circuit breaker way, uh, works and where we use circuit breaker so that's it for this video see you in the next one take care bye